Hey guys, Cliff Gray here with Flat Tops Wilderness Guides and True Hunts. Today I'm going to show you how to face cape a buck. And uh, this, uh, this would be helpful to you if you're wanting to just European uh, mount a skull. Uh, it's nice to know how to face cape a buck. You can do it in the field and you can get the cape off. Uh, and then you've got a clean skull to pack. And then for guys packing it, it's a whole, whole lot easier if you do that. Of course, we can pack them with the cape on them like this too. Um, but if you got time in camp and you want to face cape it, people should feel comfortable doing that. It seems like people are really scared of face caping animals. They're afraid of, you know, ruining the eyes or the ears or something and doing damage that a taxidermist can't fix. And I think people really are too nervous about it. If you take your time and you pay attention to a couple of things I show you, it's really not that big a deal. And after you do a couple, it'll just be second nature. It's really just about knowing where the anatomy is on the animal. It's not a difficult process. And then the other thing is, is I think everybody should know how to do it. Even if you don't want the cape on, a mature, on mature animals like this, to me, it always bums me out when guys don't take the cape out. There could always be somebody out there like, Right now it's fourth rifle season in Colorado. I'm sure if we took this cape into a taxidermist, he's got somebody who just dropped off a buck and the guy cut the armpit on the cape or short cape the buck or whatever. So even if you're not gonna use the cape, go ahead and take the cape off a nice mature animal like this and just take it to your taxidermist and, and donate it to them. Um, or you know, they, a lot of times they'll give you 50, 100 bucks on them. These mule deer capes are pretty common, so there's not really a market for them, but somebody who needs one, particularly a nice uh, nice winter, you know, winter uh, uh, cover cape like this, like this is a beautiful mule deer that's got his winter coat on it. A cape like this, there's always somebody that would love love to have it. So uh, even if you're not gonna use it, I think you should, uh, you should take, take the time to, to go ahead and cape the animal out. On other animals like big bull elk, moose, stuff like that, if you're gonna European them, you should for sure still take the cape off the animal the, and, and you know, do a nice face cape, cape job and there is a market for those capes. All right, so you can see how this buck's been dorsal cut all the way up almost to the, basically the back of his skull, okay? So that's, that's what you wanna do. I mentioned this in another, in another video. A lot of guys like to tube their bucks out and they think they're doing the taxidermist a favor. The reality is I've talked to a lot of taxidermists and most of them end up just splitting those capes anyway. So don't feel bad about dorsal cutting your capes, okay? Particularly in, these, in the mountains and stuff like that um, where you don't wanna leave that chunk of, chunk of meat right here, okay? When you dorsal cut them, <clears throat> you're gonna have access to this, this up here where you can get the cape all the way back here. And then of course, if you're gonna face cape them, you're gonna have to do this. You're gonna have to dorsal, dorsal cut the cape up here, okay? And so um, that's the first thing is that's basically how the cape lays out. When I start to face cape an animal is I actually start on their mouth. And the reason is, is if you start from the back of the animal, what happens is you kind of lose track of where you're at. So what I'll do is the first thing I'll do is I'll cape this animal down as far as I can and then start from the back and, and, and meet that cut. You can do this with, um, you know, just a real sharp pocket knife, a, a smaller knife. Uh, there's a lot of different little capey knives out there that are specialized for it. I know Kestrel makes a nice little, uh, little capey knife that's handy. I, I do like to use a scalpel like a Havilon in this it's, er, for this uh, process. It's a little easier than, than using a hunt knife, but you can surely just use your standard hunt knife or pocket knife. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the gum line. It's just an overarching theory is you wanna have as much on the cape as possible. If you leave flesh, um, parts of the hide or whatever on the skull, you can't put it back on the cape. So just be, just be uh, cautious about that and conservative. So what I do is I actually go just right at the gum line. I'll start to cut that cape off and I'll leave the taxidermist a lot of the gum, the gums. So I'm just gonna work on the top, right along the palate there. And then on the teeth, teeth side, you can tell even better because I actually stay pretty close to the teeth. And you're gonna see, and taxidermists are gonna tell you that that's, that's more than enough. You know, you really only need the lips, but you might as well just be conservative about it.
So one tip is I do try to leave as much like all this lip right here. Okay, so I don't have like a thin chunk of the lip on there. I'm leaving the whole gum line. Really the gums is what I'm trying to say, not the lip. This would be the lip. But I leave that whole gum line so the taxidermist has it. If you happen to be turning your own cape, which is which is unlikely unless you're in a really remote environment, but if you want to learn how to do that, one thing I'll tell you is on this face stuff, make sure you're leaving plenty for the taxidermist, but also don't try to try to limit how much of like the actual meat you leave on the cape because you're gonna have to get that off in camp before you salt it. These faces in particular, you cannot you cannot uh, salt them with flesh on them. Guys make that mistake in the whole, and it'll, it'll rot, okay? All it does is it just it just dries out the first layer of meat that you're leaving on that cape. It doesn't it doesn't actually uh, save the save the cape. So just be careful about that if that if that's what you're doing. If you're not doing that, just don't worry about it, and you can you can just be more conservative about it and leave more flesh on there, and uh, your taxidermist can can do that in the shop. So one little tip I'll tell you guys right now, and just just this goes back to learning the anatomy, is the jowl of the deer actually goes way back in here, okay? So it goes way back in here. See my finger here, okay? So when you're working this way, you wanna make sure that you're getting all that jowl and following his mouth all the way back. Because it's really easy to cut that jowl off. It's not the end of the world. The reality is it's not gonna be shown on the mount. But if you want a nice, clean cape, and have it all in one spot. It's just something to keep in mind. People don't realize how far that jowl goes back. All right, so once I've got the lower, the lower jaw kind of skinned, I come up here to the nose. And what I do on the nose is it's cartilage, right? Okay. But what I'll do is I don't want to end up cutting towards the nose and popping out on the top of the nose right here. It's really hard for a taxidermist to fix this, this nice, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like a like just a fuzz um, and so it's hard for them to fix that so what I do is while I can see it I'm gonna go ahead and go through the cartilage down like this and this is somewhere where if you're coming from the back of the buck the whole time it's super easy to come out here and then pop out like right here mid nose and then you've got to cut right across here this thin hair and the tax trimmers can fix it but it's gonna take them a lot of time so I just got right down into the cartilage there. So I know I'm leaving that whole nose on there. And then from the back side, I'm gonna end up coming to that and going straight down like that and meeting that cut, okay? So I'm gonna go just straight back and then I don't wanna scoop out here. I'll do that when I come from the back. All right. So that's basically how far I go. I get the nose back, I get the mouth back, I get these jowls back. And then I'm gonna turn the buck um, to the back and kind of start caping it there where you intu intuitively would think you're gonna cape. Some people will do less here. Some people will just do the lips. Some people will do a little bit more and get the buck further, further down, just kind of personal preference. But that's about how much I do from the top. Okay, so the next part of this I'll show you, and I'm gonna do it from kind of an odd angle. But what we gotta do is we gotta cut to the antlers, right? And so there's two ways to do this. Kind of the classic way is a Y, right? So to go up here, cut to this antler, cut to this antler. And that's usually what I do on deer. It's a little easier uh, and makes a lot of sense. On, on horned animal, non-antlered animals like sheep and, and that sort of thing, a lot of times their bases will be really close together, okay? So the problem with the Y cut is when you do the Y cut, you actually end up with a chunk of hide right here and it's just hanging on by just a little, a little thin chunk of hide right onto the cape. So imagine that these bases are all the way in here. So you've got a little chunk of hide right here that's just barely hanging on. And that's fine if it stays on, but if that cape goes to the tannery or whatever, and somehow it just snags on something in that patch, you know, this patch could be, you know, this big. If that vanishes, it's, a, it's an issue for the taxidermist. So a lot of times on horn animals with big bases that are close, I'll seven cut them. So I'll go to one and then I'll go across and then you don't have that effect of kind of a hanging hanging chunk of hide there. Um, that's particularly the case with Audad, big Audad rams. It's almost impossible if you Y cut them 
it's almost certain you're gonna end up with that little chunk of hide falling off because it's just gonna be barely fitting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and cut down here a little bit, get myself a little room. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll just go to the base of this antler here And I try to keep my knife in there when I do these cuts so the taxidermist doesn't have a, a uh, kind of a, you know, a, a zigzag line to sew. You kind of want a straight line. So just try to keep the, keep the knife in there. So you'll see that's one of the Ys there. Or one of the side of the Ys, I should say. And here at this one, this base here, Same thing, get my knife underneath the hide. Keep it under there. Pop it up. So this is what I'm talking about in terms of the seven cut versus the Y cut. If these two bases are close together, this little chunk right here is going to end up just be barely hanging on. On this buck, it's got that much hide to keep it, so it's no big deal. Y cut's perfect. But if there's a, if these are close together, just do a seven cut. Boom, boom. You won't have to worry about it. So when you're starting to open up this cut. One of the things to be careful of is the earbud right here. Pretty obvious, but you can you can cut through your hide there if you're not paying attention. And what I find, another trick, is a lot of people, they're really concerned about cutting the cape off the base of this antler. So they jump to that. It's like they want to get it over with. But you want to do that last. You want to get all this skinned off. You want to get this skinned off as far as you can up here. You want to get to the ears or you're going to end up fighting that hide when you're doing the difficult job of going around the antlers. So don't worry about it. I think people are, they're, they got so much anxiety about doing that. They want to jump to it and get it over with where you need to loosen up the hide. Get all this easy stuff off of here where you're not fighting it. When you're working back on the neck here, I've mentioned this in other videos, but it's just a tip for people for skinning in general, is people are really worried about puncturing the hide. And the way you're gonna puncture the hide is if you grab the hide and you put a lot of pressure like here, like my fingers are right there, okay? Now if I start cutting the end of the hide there, it's gonna cut. But if I go out here and like this, grab here like this and create like a little trampoline here, a lot, it's a lot harder for me, I can almost cut damn near towards the hide and I'm not going to cut it because it's got a little give to it. So here when you go to the antlers you want a good starting point so get, take the, the end of your Y cut and go all the way to the base of your antler where there's no hair above that cut. Okay. You want to go all the way up to the base of the antler. Don't leave a ring of hair on there. It's not the end of the world if you end up doing that. Uh, they, you know, they, they pull the cape up, up high anyways, but uh, it helps them out a little bit if you can go all the way up to the base. And then what I do is I just start to just wedge my knife in there as close as I can and just kind of make little baby cuts. Some guys will use a screwdriver or something. They'll get a screwdriver in there. I, I find that I don't need to do that. I can kind of just scoop my blade in there along the pedestal of the, the buck. And you can see here, there's just like there's just like maybe one little, you know, like one layer of hair, like little literally a hair width I'm leaving on there. That's kind of unavoidable, but you don't want you don't want, to, don't want to leave much more than that. You don't want to leave like a quarter inch of the cape because it ends up with the cape ends up with bigger holes than the antlers are, and then you work for your taxidermist. And then.
this can be a real tedious part of the cape. It's just kind of going in there. And it's also where you're going to dull your knife the most. Just because you're against the antler and the bone there. So you can see there, that's kind of how it looks. How those bases should be clean. Just a little bit of hair on there. If you can avoid it at all, that'd be perfect. But that's probably about as close as you're going to get. So what we're doing here is we're just digging, basically digging that cape out of there. Trying to keep as much of that hide, or hair I should say, on the cape. On, on bucks that have really big bases, big gnarly bases, it's tricky. Even this buck here, you can see kind of how he has a little little gnarl to his base. Makes it, makes it tricky to kind of fall along there. And one thing you want to do too is, if you can avoid it, you don't want to end up like, like you, the last thing you want to do is go like this, cut in like this. Because what you end up doing is you end up cutting like you shaving the hair off and you get like a straight edge on the cape there so you want to dig so you're cutting as little of that hair off as you can you can see how my knife shaves it there so you want to be careful about how much of that you do so on the ears what you want to consider is you don't want to end up popping out the hole here okay so what I do and this is just a just uh, strategy I use on a lot of my kind of taxidermy work is I put my finger inside the ear and that way I know where I'm at your body your brain kind of knows where your finger is and it doesn't want to cut it so stick it in there where it's kind of protect protecting your work and you won't end up cutting out cutting cutting into your own finger well, that sounds weird but try it and you'll know what I mean stick your finger in that ear and And here, you're going to see the ear canal, you're going to hear it first because it's got cartilage. So you'll see, you'll hear the ear canal. And what you want is you want a small hole there so you're deep enough. You really don't want to see like a hole this big. You'll be okay if you do. You really want one like this. And then just follow the skull right there. And so you can see that right there. The ear canal is probably smaller than a dime, or about the size of a dime. It's not the end of the world if it's bigger, but... And then you can, you can kind of just hold your ear, and go down towards the hide. And you can see, like, I got, like, back to that concept I was talking about. As long as I've got tension this way and not underneath it, where I'm putting, like, a hard surface underneath it, as long as I got tension that way, I can, I can basically use my blade right against the hide and it's not going to pop through no. so here's the ear canal okay and this is the the base of the ear here and then you can see right here is the, our base of our antler right and you can see how clean it is here and then here what i'm talking about is you can like this meat right here you know really you know once you get a hang of it you can leave that on the skull you see and see how i'm using my you can see I'm using my blade against my hide. That's real scary for some people and it'll take a while for you to get used to that. But as long as you don't have, like you're not going like this, like right against your, you know, hard surface or have the hide against the hard surface, you're not going to cut it. But if you have like tension like this, you can basically run that blade right on the, the hide. So here, I'll try to do it for the camera. Just kind of dig around there. And you'll you'll become free here pretty soon. Okay, so if you look at this, you can see that's what a you know that's what a pretty good cape is gonna look like. See, there's a little hair left, but it's it's pretty minimal. You don't want like a quarter inch of hair there. So on this side here, we've got kind of the hard uh, base part of the cape done. So I'm just gonna do this other side real quick, and then we'll. We'll move on a lot quicker. Okay. 
Okay, so once you have the bases of the deer done, the ears are off the deer. So the rest is actually fairly easy, but there's just a couple tricky spots I'll show you. So I'm just gonna loosen this all up. Okay, and the, one of the tricky spots comes up a lot quicker than people think, and that's the eyes. And so the best way to do this is, this is going back to the concept of using your finger. Just take your finger and put it in the eye, okay? And when I say in the eye, I don't mean like don't push it in here and push the eyelid back. I mean stick it in the eye like you're going to try to guide, gouge the deer's eyeball out, okay? Like get in there and feel right up into the eye and pull that away from the skull like this, okay? Pull it away from the skull, everything. There's like a tube from the eye, the eyelid back that tube and you want all that tube on the on the cape okay this is somewhere you want to be careful because if you don't have that you push this stuff back you can cut this this little soft eyelid out and that's a that's a challenge for the taxidermist to fix so finger in way in like you're trying to gouge that eyeball out and then pull back all right so just to show you that finger in the eye pull out and then here's the orb of the eye okay See my blade is towards the orb of the the orb of the eyeball. It's not out here like this. And you're gonna see where the head of my finger is. The head of my finger is right here, okay? So you don't want to be cutting into this. That's where that eyelid is. I like to just just ride the orb with my blade. And I'm kind of working my way down the down the jowl as I do this. And then coming back so I'm not fighting. See if you just if you just focus on the eye, you're gonna end up fighting that. So get all this out of the way and then come back to your hard stuff. Get your finger in there. And then what I do is like once I know I got the eyelid, because I can feel my finger right here, I'll just go in here and I can cut cut through that little tube. And you'll see what I mean in a second. And you're going to think you're cutting through the eyeball, but the eyeball is way back in there. See? So this is the eyeball. Okay. So you can see all the eyelid is out here. I'm not tucking it back in there. And you can see from the inside how easy it would be to cut that off. See how, see that little eyelid right there? Be really careful about that. What I do is on the front of the eyeball, now that I see where my anatomy is, same thing, I'll be really careful. And I, and I stick my knife and I ride the orb by the orb, I mean this section here. So here you'll see what I mean. See that? That's a tube. There's a tube of of kind of hot cape there, okay? And you want you can leave that on the cape. Uh, they actually some of them use it. Some most most taxidermists don't. But when you're salting, cleaning up these face capes, a lot of times you'll thin that out and and uh, salt it. But but that's how it should look. The whole tube, okay? And now the next tricky spot is we're getting to the front of the eye. You want to be careful here because this part of the eye is stuck to that orb. And then here, you can see he's got a deep tear duct. So a lot of guys will go over this orb. That They'll be real careful here and then they'll go Just like, imagine this is under the hide. And now they've cut the, the, the tear duct out. So you gotta be really careful. So here, this is a good time to get your finger on the other side. It's almost like there's just a there's just the thinnest chunk of hide right there on the orb, and it's kind of what's weird is it's cartilagey 
like it's cartilagey under here. So it's it's you can kind of almost dig into the bone to some extent just to be safe. Okay, so I'll show you that real quick. See this? This is that spot right here. So that's easy to cut off. So our next spot, can you still see Eileen? Mm -hmm. Next spot is the tear duct. So I'm gonna stick my finger in there, pull as hard as I can. I'll clean this up a little bit. Like in here, like your like longer cuts where you know the anatomy, it, it, it keeps the hide cleaner. If you you know in, in there, but mm -hmm. so here on on deer, it's not too bad, but elk it's it's like it seems like it's like a half inch or or even deeper. So right here, once you get past the eye, put your knife in there and don't mess around. You gotta you basically gotta gotta get in there and go as deep as you can into that 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 tear duct. And a lot of times it's actually got kind of like a almost like an earwax in it. And you gotta kinda get around that. So here's the here's the tear duct right here. And you can see where I nicked it just a smidge right there. That's that'll be unnoticeable. But if it's perfect, you won't even have a nick there. But you can see that how deep it goes there. And then you'll you'll see here, it's usually got like some sort of it's like like a chunk of junk in there. And so you'll know you're in the base of it because that's where the kind of waxy stuff builds up. And if you cut it off, it's not the end of the world. They can fix it, but it's a, it's a project for them. Same deal there. So that's real, this is a real tricky area if you haven't done those top cuts because you, you won't know where you're at. So here, I was telling you on the on the nose. So what I do here is now that I can see the whole skull, can you see that Eileen? Mm -hmm. This whole skull, I can see where that nose is. So what I'll do is I'll basically just scoop the nose out. I'll scoop the nose out without any risk of coming out of the top of it. Don't you, I kind of like to get one side off first. Makes the other side a lot quicker. And it exposes it all. I'll show you that real quick. You can see here, see how exposed it is? It's super easy to cape stuff when it's, now, you, now you've got the whole thing hanging off. I'm gonna turn it back to me where it's just a little easier for me. Alright, so just as the last check, you can look at the, the deer's head. There's no hair on the face. That's a good thing. That was the point of us doing this. Alright, so the key just is like a to leave you with guys you can see how deep these are be careful here you can see how thin the hide was right there and you can see how keeping these bases nice and clean takes a little time and effort okay so that's basically the gist of it i'll show you what the face looks like so you can see here guys like all this is intact this is important and like this this buck has a beautiful cape okay like these these are little intricacies on a mount that uh, that matter a lot all right so um, I, I happen to be not like crazy into shoulder mounts, but um, I'm more of a European mount guy. But when I do see a mount and there's and there's all this nice detail of the whiskers and the lips have that that beautiful height on it and the original eyelids and eyelashes, to me that's what makes makes the animal uh, so beautiful. So that's that's a finished cape. And last thing, what I do, 
just to store it. If I'm not the one salting it and stuff and doing the, the extra work after that, I just go flesh to flesh with it. And then what I do, I lay the face in the middle, okay? And then I just roll it up like that, kind of like more fold it to be honest with you. Fold it all together and I'll either drop it off to the taxidermist like that or freeze it just like that. So, hope you guys find that helpful.